lighting people? Flipping the Switch is a newly published book that chronicles the story of how lighting company Green Creative was founded by two 20-something-year-old guys, an American and a Frenchman, who met in China. And in 2010, they saw an opportunity to start an LED lamp company and become part of the LED lighting revolution, leveraging their sales, marketing, product development, and manufacturing experience in both Western and Chinese markets. Together, they bootstrapped Green Creative into a company that exceeded $50 million in revenue in about seven years, and eventually sold to a U.S. private equity firm. So we're pleased to be joined today by the co-founders of Green Creative and the co-authors of Flipping the Switch, Cole Zucker and Guillaume Vidal. Cole, Guillaume, thank you so much for joining us today. Cole, let's start with you. There's some great vignettes in your book called Lessons Learned, and one of those is called Being Seen is Half the Battle, a lesson that I think a lot of people who don't work for huge brands <laughs> might find interesting. So tell us about that lesson for unknown or lesser known brands. Sure. That sounds, uh, th sounds great. And thank you very much for having us on today. So you know, as it relates to uh, being seen, um, there's a, I'd say almost to a certain degree of dependence uh, within the industry where there's this expectation that you're going to have your reps calling on your customer, your distributors once a week, your outside salespeople once a month. Um, the thing that I, typically hear is that uh, if you're not getting sales, it's because you're not uh, spending enough time uh, with the customer directly. And uh, for me, when we were first breaking into the industry, uh, one of the challenges we had was that while there wasn't really an established brand behind us, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, just a few months ago, it was Guillaume and I in our apartment in Shanghai, uh, just discussing what this business would look like. So it was very difficult for, for you know, ourselves to be able to tell you about how amazing the business was, um, how incredible uh, the culture, the products, um, and all the things that, you know, we could uh, bring value to your business, um, you know, what that could look like. So, you know, we kind of had to get a bit creative around uh, being seen in front of the distributors, the, the distributors. So one of the things that we figured out would be uh, useful or beneficial would be to really add value by providing more information around what was happening in China. So to me, it wasn't so much, let's just be seen because being seen is somewhat easy. It's just a matter of getting bodies in front of distributors. And, you know, in a lot of cases, if you're a distributor and you're being sold to, a lot of the pitches are the same. And if you were to ask a distributor, you know, who called on you last week, they, in most cases, wouldn't remember uh, or won't remember, which is <laughs> kind of sad. So for us, it was, let's make sure that we're heard. And by doing that, it was talking about what was happening in China, what the manufacturing process looked like, what we're thinking in terms of product design, um, why we were using certain chip sets over others. And so really trying to kind of open up and give as much information as possible as to you know why we were doing things, why the product looked certain ways. And you know by doing that, you're, you're teaching the distributor to be able to uh, inform their customer base who in a lot of cases really doesn't know much about the technology or why certain products are being specced over others. And so for, for, for me, it was very important to not just get in front of distributors, which obviously is a very critical piece to this business, but to really be able to coach and teach them as to what was happening from a technology perspective. And so that was one of the reasons we were able to um, have success very early on is because distributors hadn't really been called on in that way before, and they appreciated that. So I think that was one of the the, the factors to, you know, why we were able to grow. So yeah, early. for sure. When, when we think about that LED revolution, for those of us that were around um, while that was happening, a lot of companies were not very transparent about saying, you know, which chip was inside or, or what how the driver mm -hmm. works and all that stuff. So having that level of transparency, you know, obviously must have uh, broken down a few barriers with the customers who were getting to know you and and, uh, and, and got to work with you. And you talked about growth, Cole. Let's switch to uh, Guillaume, who uh, spent most mm -hmm. of this journey on the uh, in, in the China side of the equation. And... Um, when you think about the growth that you folks had, Guillaume, in 2012, the book says you were doing about two million, and then a year later, eight million, which is great growth. But then in 2014, 24 million. So going from two to eight to 24 million in a span of two years is insane. And I can only imagine an operational challenge. How do you, how do you go about that business scaling so fast without possibly overpromising and disappointing customers? So yeah, it was an insane growth and that even continued after those two, three years. So it, it was uh, really something you can't really be prepared for. And we'd hoped that, but we never knew that could even happen. 
Uh, so yeah, many things got along the way very challenging. I mean, when you talk about the first year, we had probably a dozen products. And then when you talk about year three, year four, we had about 100 products. So in that period of time, you need to think about, okay, marketing side, I need to have a good roadmap showing which products I'm going to launch and then start the R&D process, open the tooling, certify the products, and then launch them. So everything can go wrong in that period of time. Something is not happening. You're launching late, you're launching early. So uh, that was extremely challenging from that side. And then obviously uh, we had amazing sales team inside the company as well as outside with the reps. And that's also a big chunk of the business. And with Cole, we had a kind of a joke. I'm like, when we started the business, my job was to make the product appear and Cole's job was to make them disappear. And that's really <laughs> what was happening in this time. It was a really an intense process of making as many stuff happening, you know, uh, coming in as possible and, and for Cole to them, have them come out. And so we have to thank, obviously, the entire team and the people also outside the business for that. And then... You talk about disappointment. We disappointed ourselves many times, not launching on time, not having the right product and lacking inventory. I mean, if you talk about a challenge for business like we had in lighting, we needed the product on the shelf in the US warehouses to, for people to be able to order them, get them delivered. But when you're launching so many new products and you have no view on the demand, no historical data, it's impossible to maintain that. So that was a, a, a big challenge on the on the inventory side. and. Obviously, the company was self-funded. So when you grow so fast, where's the money coming from? And like, we're knocking on doors all over the place. And Cole was talking about being seen. Turned out being seen by a banker a few years earlier, help us get a loan. And on day one of the loan being approved, guess what? We do 100% of it within an hour. <laughs> That's like how, how really stressed we were, like cash-wise. And we made so many mistakes during that period. But one of the great things that we had with Cole is we always try to find and spend our time on the solutions. And we kind of this way accelerated our process through that by not spending too much time on why we have the problem, which we need to understand later, but really focusing on solution. And we had many issues, but we kind of solved them and, uh, and made it happen. Well, I, I was pleased to get an advanced copy of the book and those anecdotes you just shared were, were very enlightening in many ways. And it feels like the book was obviously not written for just lighting people. It's a business story that any business mm -hmm. person can appreciate some of those, those uh, challenges that you faced and how you overcame them. And I appreciate the way that you folks um, were transparent about that. You, I think you even used the term, you failed your way to success numerous times <laughs> and some of those challenges that were going on. And, and one of those challenges in the early days when, since you were bootstrapping this and you didn't have, you know, any, any, you know, major, major funding sources is that Cole, you, when you went to California, you, you, you got yourself, uh, this is like 2010, 2011 ish. You got yourself a place in San Francisco. at $600 a month. You called it a former crack house. You didn't even sleep <laughs> on a real mattress. You said it was an air mattress and for food, you would eat $4 burritos. So that's a lot of pain and suffering. There was any of that embellished and, and, and whether it was or not, it was it, when it was lean like that, did you ever lose the motivation or determination to, to keep going and possibly hang things up? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I would say that uh, if anything, there were a number of stories that didn't make it into the book because uh, if we had published them, people wouldn't have really believed us. Um, for us early on, um, you know, we put our life savings into the business and um, we could do that because we were in our you know, mid 20s and we were single and we were fully committed to just focusing on one thing, which was, which was the company. But uh, when all of your money is in the company, uh, both your business runway and personal runway are are are, are the same, and so if you can uh, slow your 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 cash flow as it relates to your personal life down, it actually increases your runway for the business side. And so we took that very seriously uh, from you know on my so side and on Guillaume's side of the world. And so it you know the first year uh, that we built the business, I was actually subletting people's apartments using Craigslist. A Craigslist and uh, you know, I'd stay in a place for three or four days at a time and then just pack up and move to another place because that was the cheapest, you know, rent I could find or the cheapest method of of of, of having a place to sleep um, without being on the streets. And you know, the the just to kind of give you some color around this um, crack house, this former crack house. So it's actually a <laughs> historical it was a historic building. Um, it used to be Ken Kesey's house many, many decades ago. And uh, uh, responded to this ad on Craigslist because it was the cheapest place I could find. 
uh, it was in San Francisco in an area that is uh, somewhat of a kind of a failed society. It was a bit like Gotham City uh, with lots of junkies all over the place. Unfortunately, things have uh, gotten worse um, over the last decade. But um, uh, moved in day one, there was a guy that walked in. <clears throat> His name was Fleetwood. He had just come out of prison um, after 17 years serving. And uh, he said that he was friends with the landlord and that he'd be crashing on the sofa. We had a kind of a contentious relationship. Uh, one time he uh, got in my face. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. Uh, there was another time I walked in and like one of my doors in the apartment was open. So I called 911. I was afraid that there was an intruder and they came in guns blazing. It was like an episode of Cops, um, although nobody was there. Um, but it was certainly an interesting experience. But, you know, one of the things I kept telling myself while we were going through this wild and crazy lifestyle was that this is going to be amazing content for my future book. And uh, <laughs> lo and behold, here we are. So uh, in the end of the day, it all worked out. That that is an amazing story, and yeah, it's it's not just unglamorous. It sounded yeah dangerous at times, and um, but then you know the story you know grew and grew, and with that the the sales revenue going up because you were doing a, apparently a very good job on the revenue production side. Cole, hopefully you're able to upgrade your your living accommodations rather quickly, and then by 2017, um, you folks had exceeded over 50 million dollars in sales, and and were. Um, being shopped around for potential acquisition. Um, so, Guillaume, tell us about that process. How how tough were the negotiations? Uh, how many suitors? Like, did you have a long list of suitors, a short list of suitors? And were there any wrinkles along the way of of your exit before you you sold out to a U.S. private equity firm? Yeah. So, I mean, it was uh, anyway. Selling a company is a very difficult and long process. No matter who is talking about it, is going to tell you that it's not easy. And, the first thing, which is actually not people don't think about it much, is like the decision to actually start selling the business because it's a big decision. And Cole and I were managing this. The company was growing. We had amazing product line on the lamp side and the fixture side, and we had amazing team in place. And so we're like, what do we do now? And, you know, Cole and myself, very humble guys, were like, how do we double this company size? And that's when we realized, wait a minute, we don't have the skill set to double it. And we don't have the financial assets to double it. So we need some help. And that's kind of when we decided to go to the market and kind of sell the company. And because the company was in a very good shape um, and people knew the brand and the, the product line, and it was uh, very attractive to a lot of people. And when you go to market to sell a business, there is really like private equity, so financial people, and also people from the industry, like competitors. And both of those sides actually had a lot of interest in the business on our side. But really, it's something that takes a lot of time from uh, Cole and myself, but also from the team, because the key people are taking a part of it. Then you have people outside the business. So the banker, which is kind of the agent to help you sell the business. You have the lawyers, the CPAs, your dealers. So you're always talking to a ton of people uh, to get this through. And when we're actually, uh, you know, uh, closing to the uh, close to close the business, uh, the the deal we actually call flew to China because we had to be together, and it was literally twenty four hour no, but twenty hours a day work because you had people on all the continents, all the places, and uh, we took a room in my apartment and we we're like on the phone and we were like taking a nap relay. So I was going to sleep for two hours, Cole was in charge, and uh, and back and forth. Uh, and actually, the weekend um, I got my son born the same weekend. And on the Monday, we closed the deal. So emotion wise, intensity wise, it was uh, really at the top. Uh, but we are very amazed that we find a great team uh, to take place. And uh, yeah, that was a, a very nice experience. It, it sounds harrowing and exciting, all wrapped in one. And the fact that like two of your most important life events happened within days of one another is also amazing, Guillaume. And, uh, you know, when we when we look at that whole big picture. I think that's part of the reason why I enjoyed this, this book. I, I pay attention to business and, uh, but I, I, I never get to really see behind the curtain of, you know, why did you have to do that nap relay? But you describe it in the book and it makes sense that you had to be there to kind of answer the questions and, and make sure that the deal got over the finish line. So some of those things was really enlightening, um, no pun intended for, for many reasons. And um, if we can stray away from the book for just a moment, Cole, you and I have never connected in person, but we've connected on social media, specifically LinkedIn. And over the last uh, year, you've done a very interesting experiment that recently ended. Tell us about the experiment of 
publishing on LinkedIn every single day. Why did you do it? And what did you learn? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I was surprised to have read about a year ago that uh, uh, only 1% of people on LinkedIn post more than once every two weeks. And if you think about you know Twitter or Instagram, where there's a lot of content creators, it's kind of noisy. It's harder to have your voice heard. Um, but LinkedIn is a very different um, animal. And as it relates to kind of the professional community, everyone is there. And uh, I figured, well, you know, posting is a little bit of a nerve wracking situation because people might judge me and, you know, maybe nobody will uh, read any of my posts. So, you know, nothing will be amplified. But I figured if I did it every day for a year, I would theoretically learn something. And uh, it was an interesting experience. Uh, copywriting is definitely a skill, uh, a very important one at that. Um, having your own personal brand is something that I think is absolutely critical in this day and age. Um, and so honing that is also very important. Um, and then lastly, I mean, as far as you know, what came out of it, um, every meeting I had, every time I ran into a business uh, associate in some capacity, they would say, oh, I you know, read your post, I'm a fan, I like this. Or someone would come up to me um, who, you know, I, obviously I know them, and they'd say, oh, you wrote this post three or four months ago and it really resonated. And it was just so cool to see that people were actually you know, reading my thoughts. So I couldn't recommend it enough. It doesn't cost anything to do it. And you know, once you build a system, it doesn't take that much time. Uh, I might go back to posting again, but uh, uh, you know, it was a really fun experience and I highly recommend it. Well, I love, love, love seeing the posts and I'm not sure if I read every single one, but I would read the ones that would <laughs> pop into my feed. And yeah, it was, it wasn't just lighting stuff. It was more business advice for business people. And, um, and it was relevant. It wasn't like, you know, you weren't taking a picture of your fancy dinner or your fancy <laughs> hotel that you're staying at. You were providing relevant business, um, it, whether it's advice or lessons or something, it was always uh, very informative. So, um, congrats on, on this amazing, journey that you two were able to do and document now in your latest project. Um, random unprepared sixth question here, Guillaume, what are the chances after now working on green creative, a multi-year project, another multi-year project with writing this book, Guillaume, what are the chances of you and Cole collaborating on a future multi-year project? Oh, we already started. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the book is, uh, has been uh, actually a very good uh, way uh, to move forward because we kind of like connected and put our stories together and we share all the mistakes we made and we made a ton of mistakes and we learned from them. And so a lot of companies now are reaching out uh, while we were writing the book. So it was at the same time uh, asking for our advice, helping to help them grow, raise money, how you get to a certain size or sell the business. So we actually involve in uh, investing, also advising companies. So the next multi-year project has already started. <laughs> That's great to know. Well, congrats on that. And I, I can't wait to see what you folks continue to work on, um, whether it's lighting or related or not. Um, I'm really grateful to catch up with you folks. I'm certain that many people in the Inside Lighting audience were grateful to catch up with you folks today. So uh, Cole, thank you for joining us today for five big questions. Thank you so much. And Guillaume, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Hey there, we really enjoyed that discussion. We hope that you did as well. Be sure to click that big LED logo next to me. And what that'll do is subscribe you to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next five big questions interview. And YouTube subscribers always receive an early preview to the next interview before we even post it on the Inside Lighting website. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.